Hi guys, so in this video I wanted to talk about my experience of keeping uh, Manakapuro Redback Angels and when I first uh, bought my Manakapurus a couple of years ago and I was looking for some information online and I couldn't really find anything on YouTube or uh, on internet uh, there are lots of videos of Malakapuro angels uh, on YouTube but there's very little information about uh, what what type of angels are they how are they different from other types of angel fish or is there anything special about them as compared to other types of angel fish and uh, let's start with the distribution Manakapuro angels are originally from northeastern Brazil in South America. They are from uh, Lake uh, and uh, River Manakapuro. It's in between Amazon River and uh, Rio Negro. So this is Amazon and this is Rio Negro. And Manakapuro is here. So that's a, a whole system of rivers and lakes. Uh, it's a re relatively large territory over here. So. Manakapuro angels are originally from this territory. It's in the state of Amazon, so it's uh, all covered by the tropical rainforest. And one thing that I will say about uh, this uh, Manakapuro system is that it's a black water system. So uh, all these habitats are black water habitats. They have lots of leaf litter, they have lots of driftwood and uh, uh, riparian overhanging plants. Uh, and um, Generally, as far as I've read, it has a uh, white uh, quartz uh, sand on the bottom. So in the Lake uh, Manakapuro and Rio Manakapuro system, there are generally four types of uh, Manakapuro angels. First one is just a regular striped wild type angel, which doesn't have a red back, so it, it has no red color at all. It's a really beautiful variety, and I've seen them for sale wi wild caught, uh, so they're usually called um, Manakapuro angels, but they're not called red back Manakapuro angels, so they're just Manakapuro angels. And th they would be absolutely beautiful. They have these uh, stripes and they have this uh, somewhat extended uh, body shape and uh, really long. Uh, dorsal and anal fins uh, so they're really beautiful but no red color uh, th the second variety are uh, Manakapuro angels with lots of red dots on the uh, upper part of their backs so they are not exactly red back either but they have lots of red dots I've never seen that variety myself and they are supposed to be very similar to Santa Isabel angels but they are from Manakapuro region uh, the third variety is what we usually uh, know as Manakapuru redback angels. So they have this intense uh, red color on the top part of their back. Uh, when they're young, it might be orange, it might be yellowish, but as they mature, as they reach about one and a half year old or two years old, it, it will be really intense red. And the fourth type of Manakapura angels are so-called uh, super red angels. Uh, sometimes uh, when you see these uh, labels uh, super red Manakapura angel, you would think that this is a domestic strain. It's a tang bread type of uh, Manakapura angels, but it is not actually. That's also a wild form, a wild color form of Manakapura angels. So the difference between regular red back Manakapura angel and uh, super red Manakapura angel is that super reds, they have red uh, color throughout most most of the upper half part of their body is covered with this intense red color and it's really beautiful here you can see pictures of some of my uh, super red monocapura angels uh, the difference uh, between a super red and regular monocapura angels is also that super reds at least the ones that i've i've had they have really extended uh, and really high bodies uh, so they're very similar to altum angels in terms of body shape they have really uh, long dorsal fins and really long uh, anal fins here you can see a picture of a juvenile this fish is just uh, four months old but it was already about 20 centimeters high and really long fins a uh, really high body uh, so it's a very beautiful fish it's much more difficult to find super red uh, monocapurus and <coughs> uh, sometimes they are actually sold as uh, regular monocapurus because uh, these are breeders who breed them as F1 or F2, they're not aware about the differences or 
sellers and retailers are not aware about the differences either. But it could be also the other way around when you're buying a super red Monocapur Angel as a juvenile and you will actually get a regular one because again people who sell them may not be aware about these differences and they just want to use this label of super red to sell something that's not actually a super red. So when do uh, Monocapur Angels become red actually most of the time you will uh, only see juveniles available for sale and when they're small they're not much different from all other types of uh, wild types of angel fish and uh, uh, they when they're really small like this size they would probably even look very similar to regular zebra or striped types of uh, angel fish so it's really hard to say that they are actually going to be Monocapur redbacks at that size. So you really need to wait for them to color up. You need to wait for them to actually grow up and uh, for their body shape to acquire a typical Monocapur uh, redback uh, angelfish body, body shape. Normally it would take them about six to seven months to start showing up first red colors on the top of their back. So you really have to wait for it. Uh, some people keep them for a while and they raise relatively large fish which doesn't get any colors so they believe that they have got something else not monocapurus but you really have to wait for it because monocapur angels they grow really fast and they can be really large but they show up their colors quite late so from six to seven months the best colors you would get when they're about one year old and super colors will show up when they're about two years old so this is when they will be really intensely red some of the fish start coloring up earlier than others it depends also on uh, distribution or on the source of your fish so it, it's always a bit different so what does uh, this red color depend on are all monocapur red back angels get equally bright well in my experience uh, uh, not really uh, the colors uh, the red colors depend on feeding uh, depend on water quality and obviously depend on their genes so if they had uh, if they're wild obviously they are, are going to have really bright red colors but only for a certain period of time if you don't provide them with adequate feeding and uh, with absolutely um, with absolutely pristine water conditions they're going to lose some of their colors even if they had them initially uh, even if uh, you bought them like that and they're wild caught fish so you would expect them to to be as red as they are now for the rest of their life but that's in most cases not going to happen unless you provide them with adequate conditions if you're buying juveniles and you're raising them up it's really important to follow these guidelines on feeding and water conditions in order for them to develop this really intense and bright red colors so in terms of feeding um, you need to feed your Monocapur angels uh, high quality color enhancing foods yeah, yeah they would absolutely love all sorts of live food and frozen foods but uh, their staple has to be some sort of a flakes or some sort of a, uh, dry foods that have some uh, red color enhancing elements in my case i was always feeding my manakapura angels this uh, tetra pro uh, color crisps and they absolutely loved them and uh, I've raised them from a smaller size to adults on this food only, just occasionally feeding them with some uh, frozen foods and they've had absolutely uh, magnificent colors as you can see from these pictures and uh, most of these pictures are actually pictures of juveniles so uh, I just want to show you that uh, they would develop these really bright colors at a really early age at about four months to five months b even before they should be actually fully colored. So. The other criteria for their well-being is water quality. If you have wild-caught uh, Malacapur redback angels or if you have F1 or F2, uh, so born from wild parents, uh, they need really uh, excellent quality water. So uh, zero nitrates, zero nitrites, and I'm not even talking about ammonia, it has to be non-existent in your tank. So frequent water changes, uh, frequent massive water changes and uh, really efficient biological filtration it, this is what you need to provide them so that they would be uh, fully colored and in top uh, 
notch shape. I've seen people who would buy really high quality Monocapura angels and they would keep them in not so good conditions and after a while their fish would just lose all the all of their red color so they would just get normal regular striped angels. Uh, the other thing that you need to keep in mind when you are buying Monocapura redback angels is that these fish are really going to grow large. Uh, they are the second largest uh, type of angel fish after altums. So juveniles about um, three to four months old uh, they would usually get to about 20 centimeters high really fast so these are really large fish and uh, once they adult uh, they can be almost the same size as an adult altum angel fish so they would get to about 30 centimeters high and uh, so they're really large fish they have lo long dorsal and anal fins so they need lots of space and they need high tanks and they need large tanks for example if you keep regular uh, tank bred angels uh, in uh, a 20 gallon tank or like a 150 liter tank it's certainly not something that you should be using for Malakapur redback angels they would require at least 250 liters uh, like something like 60 gallon tank for for a pair and a much larger tank for a group so you have to keep in mind that they need lots of tank space in terms of the aggression levels I've noticed that they are much less aggressive than tank bread forms of angels and I've kept my mon I've kept my Manakapur angels with uh, smaller fish such as neon tetras cardinal tetras and all sorts of uh, uh, other smaller fish and they would never touch them they would they wouldn't be interested in them so they're not very aggressive towards other fish yes they might have occasional fights among themselves but um, the aggression levels towards other fish are not particularly high even during the breeding period in terms of breeding i didn't notice anything different about monocapuru angels uh, as compared to other wild types of angels yes in order for the larva to hatch you need excellent uh, water conditions uh, really low germ count in your water so the water has to be soft and it has to be top quality but apart from that i didn't notice anything uh, particularly different so you need to keep in mind uh, feeding uh, water parameters uh, particularly cleanliness of your water and uh, tank size so these are the three main um, conditions for successful keeping of uh, Monocapur redback angels I hope this video was useful for you please leave your comments in the comment section and I would be happy to hear about your experiences of keeping Monocapur redback angels and uh, I would highly recommend you getting this absolutely beautiful and stunning uh, form of angel fish if you can and you will absolutely enjoy it so i will see you in further videos